Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Trump hits the UN where it hurts after the vote against his Jerusalem decision. The UN is showing off just how anti-Israel and anti-peace they really are. After President Trump fulfilled his campaign promise to recognize Jerusalem, the UN pushed back. Many voted against Trump's decision. However, the UN has to deal with Nikki Haley and Donald Trump. At the UN we're always asked to do more and give more. So, when we make a decision, at the will of the American PPL, ABT were to locate our embassy, we don't expect those we've helped to target us. On Thursday there'll be a vote criticizing our choice. The U.S. will be taking names, tweeted Nikki Haley. The president will be watching this vote carefully and has requested I report back on those countries who voted against us. We will take note of each and every vote on this issue, she wrote. President Trump backed up these comments. I like the message that Nikki sent yesterday at the United Nations. For all those nations that take our money and then they vote against us at the Security Council, or they vote against us potentially at the Assembly, said President Trump. They take hundreds of millions of dollars and even billions of dollars, and then they vote against us. Well, we're watching those votes. Let them vote against us. We'll save a lot. We don't care. But this isn't like it used to be where they could vote against you and then you pay them hundreds of millions of dollars and nobody knows what they're doing. People are tired of the United States being taken advantage of and we're not going to be taken advantage of any longer, said Trump. NBC asks Paul Ryan are you living in a fantasy world for saying tax cuts help business, his response is perfect. NBC's Savannah Guthrie tried to claim that Paul Ryan was living in a fantasy world for believing that tax cuts are helpful to businesses and employees. She made her point by referencing the anecdote of one billionaire. Paul Ryan countered her with facts and statistics. The problem is a lot of CEOs have said, really candidly. I'm looking at a list of CEOs that said, we don't plan to reinvest, what they're planning to do is to do stock buybacks, to line the pockets of shareholders, said Guthrie. Let me quote Michael Bloomberg, a billionaire, hardly an enemy of business, he said, CEOs aren't waiting on a tax cut to jumpstart the economy, a favorite phrase of politicians who have never run a company, or to hand out raises. It's pure fantasy to think that the tax bill will lead to significantly higher wages and growth. I'll ask you plainly, are you living in a fantasy world? Asked Guthrie. Paul Ryan had the perfect response. I would compare that anecdote to just the surveys of businesses like the National Association of Manufacturers surveys which show the vast majority of businesses are going to do just what we say, reinvest in their workers, reinvest in their factories, pay people more money higher wages, said Ryan. The data is very clear by the way, workers benefit from this through higher wages, it's not a question of if, it's a question of how much they benefit, said Ryan. MSNBC's Nicole Wallace asks are Republicans dead inside she quickly gets her answer. MSNBC's Nicole Wallace theorized that Republicans are dead inside because they are willing to question the FBI. Let me put this to you one more time. Are Republicans dead inside? Why don't Republicans care that a Republican-led Justice Department, a Republican-led FBI, led by men appointed by Donald Trump is being smeared and the character of the men leading those agencies assassinated by people associated with the Republican Party, not the Democratic Party? she asked. Obviously there is a lot wrong with her statement. First she shows that she doesn't believe in objectivity. She thinks Republicans must all have blind loyalty to other Republicans. She is also ignoring all the credible evidence that the FBI is biased. Even Trey Gowdy called out the FBI for their biases. This is a really bad fact pattern. 
I hate it for Rod Rosenstein that he's the one explaining it because he's not FBI official, Peter Strzok, and he's not Deputy FBI Director, Andy McCabe, and he's not Jim Comey, so he's having to do a little bit of cleanup. But these are really bad facts if you care about an impartial, objective Department of Justice and FBI, pointed out Trey Gowdy. I'm still trying to figure out why three FBI agents are discussing politics in the deputy director's office, because you're not supposed to discuss politics on federal ground and FBI agents aren't supposed to engage in politics for Hatch Act reasons, said Gowdy. But Wallace doesn't seem to care about facts. Rosie O'Donnell just committed a federal crime with latest attack on Trump. Rosie O'Donnell has done a lot of crazy anti-Trump stunts in the past, but this may be her worst. And it is actually highly illegal. O'Donnell took to Twitter offering to bribe specific GOP officials $2 million each if they vote against the GOP tax reform bill. So how about this? I promise to give $2 million to Senator Susan Collins and $2 million to Senator Jeff Flake if they vote no. No I will not kill Americans for the sewer rich, DM me Susan, DM me Jeff. No SHT 2 million cash each, tweeted O'Donnell. She wasn't done. She continued to clarify her position over multiple tweets. Here's the thing Al, I am not looking to give more money to a corrupt system, however, this bill is criminal. I therefore offer $2 million for any GOP senator that votes no, to them personally, or directed to a nonprofit of their choice no strings attached to do what's right, she tweeted. If this bill passes democracy is done. Raping the nation in public with gleeful abandoned gavel man is Satan 16 hours and it's over on her watch, she tweeted. Fortunately, no one took her upon her offer. She also blatantly broke the law. 18 U.S.C. Section 201b states whoever, one directly or indirectly, corruptly gives, offers or promises anything of value to any public official or person who has been selected to be a public official, shall be fined under this title or not more than three times the monetary equivalent of the thing of value, whichever is greater, or imprisoned for not more than 15 years, or both, and may be disqualified from holding any office of honor, trust or profit under the United States. Dems push for Al Franken to unresign because he was bullied. While Roy Moore was running, both Democrats and Republicans pushed for Al Franken to resign over sexual harassment allegations. Democrats used Franken as a political pawn to make it seem like they care more about sexual assault than Republicans do. If Roy Moore had been elected, they would have attempted to hold that over Republicans' heads. Now that Roy Moore was not elected they want Al Franken back. According to Politico at least four different senators are urging Franken to unresign. New York Post columnist John Potteretz defended this in an interview with NBC. Will Democrats be okay if Franken stays? asked Katie Durr. Who cares, it's not their choice, it's his choice. They bullied him into resigning and now he may unresign having decided that he was bullied, responded Podhoretz. I definitely think he should not resign. I think he should submit himself, which he has willingly done and offered to do. And go through this complete process of an extensive ethics review, and whatever the outcome is I will live with it. I can live with that. I think that Franken should go through the process of what he's asked for, due process, said Democratic Senator Joe Manchin. What they did to Al was atrocious, the Democrats, said Manchin in a different interview. Trey Gowdy crushes FBI in brutal rant a level of bias you rarely see. By agent Peter Strzok, who is investigating Trump, has been caught sending very biased anti-Trump messages. Liberals like to pretend that this isn't a big deal. But Trey Gowdy put them in their place. I want to believe the path you threw out for consideration in Andy's office, that there's no way, Trump, gets elected. 
but I'm afraid we can't take that risk. It's like an insurance policy in the unlikely event you die before you're 40, wrote Sturzok in a text message on August 15, 2016 text message. Trey Gowdy commented on this during an interview with Fox's Bill Hemmer. If they were coming up with a quote insurance policy in case Donald Trump won, that is devastating, said Gowdy. What I hope is that insurance policy was not a counterintelligence investigation into the Trump campaign. This was a level of bias that you rarely see, frankly, said Gowdy. I am heartened by the fact that, Mueller, kicked Strzok off as soon as he learned. I just wish he'd have learned sooner. He's in the middle of major investigations. Thank God he's gone, but I want to know how the hell he got there in the first place, said Gowdy. Do you think the Mueller investigation is rigged? MSNBC's Brzezinski claims she has been extremely critical of Clinton's for years. MSNBC's Mika Brzezinski has had numerous on-air freakouts over President Trump. She is one of the most biased people on television. However, in a pathetic attempt to seem objective, Mika tried to convince the audience that she has been extremely critical of Hillary and Bill Clinton for 10 years. As far as Kirsten Gillibrand is concerned, I think she is an incredible talent. I think that there's a chance she might run for president someday, and I think I might support her. But she has to deal with her Clinton issue, started Brzezinski. She has to address the cameras and answer the question as to what was the motivation behind her change of opinion about the Clintons because for me, for the 10 years that I've been on this show, I have been extremely critical and concerned against the Clintons because of their abuse of women, said Brzezinski even though the first time she spoke out against Bill Clinton was last month. I don't know how your position could change on this, and I'd like to know about that process, and I'm sure there is a fair process said Mika. When did it change, and what else was out there that changed other than Hillary Clinton losing, and the Clintons for the first time in 20 years being out of power? And I love what you said about the Clintons, I just want to understand how you got there, responded Joe Scarborough.